Okay, so uh, nothing's ideal anymore. So uh, test, this is a test. This might actually go up. We'll just find out. Uh, let's see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna do the problems from the 5-3 handout. That's up on Canvas. I gave it out in class. We did 5-1 and 5-2 in class. Um, this is the very last page. It's from section 5-3. And the very first problem looks like this. Uh, let's see. X minus Y equals 8. And X plus Y equals 4. All right. Let's see if I can keep this in a good place. Um, so... In section 5.3, we're doing elimination. So we're not doing a uh, graphical method, which you actually could do here. You could solve for y, graph the two lines, see where they meet. We're not doing substitution method, which you could actually do here. You could solve for x or y and plug it in the other guy. That's section 5.2. 5.3 uh, is where uh, if when you add the two equations together, if something cancels, then you do it. If nothing cancels, then you multiply by what you need either or both equation to make two variables have opposite coefficients so that something cancels. So as you can see here, the y has a negative one and a positive one coefficient. So if I do add these two equations together, x and x is 2x, the y's cancel, 8 and 4 is 12. And we talked before about, if you saw my other video, about why we're allowed to do this. You shouldn't just do it because you were told to do it. It needs to make sense. I add the same thing to both sides. 4 and 8 is 12. X plus Y is 4. So if I add 4 to this side, I have to add 4 to this side. But again, this is 4. So I can add this to this side. I, hopefully that makes sense. I cannot go against rules we've discovered before. Every time we learn something new, it has to live within those rules. Um, and then just finishing this up, I get X is 6. I don't stop there because I realize I have two unknowns. I have to get both of them. So if I plug 6 into the second equation, let's say, um, I know this looks like number 2 too bad. Plug a 6 in, 6 plus y equals 4. Subtract 6, I get y is negative 2. Can you still see that? Yes, good. Um, yeah, so then the solution, you can either just leave it like this or you can put it like that. And I think I've said that. So many times that you probably you're probably going a little crazy with me saying it. All right, here's where I test the eraser. Let's see what happens here. Um, so you got that. You can pause it if you want to. That's the first one on that five three handout. Hey, look at that. That's awesome. Oh man, thank God. You could tell I did not. This is the first time I'm using the board, so it's all happening live. We'll do it live. All right. So second one, second one is equally nice. Maybe I'll call them A and B, so it doesn't get too confusing. I always like to identify which equations I have, one or two, A and B, just so I know what I'm working with each time. Again, this is another one that I don't have to change anything. These already want to kill each other. Uh, so I go ahead and add them together, add 3 to this side, and 3 is this, so I add 3, which is this, to this side. These cancel, 5x minus 5x is 0, 3y and 2y is 5y, divide by 5, I get y is 4. Then I pick either equation and put a 4 in, it does not matter which equation. Maybe I'll finally show you that it doesn't matter which equation. So let's use this one, let's plug 4 back in for y. I think you can still see that. I can see it now. Uh, then I get 5x plus 12 equals 17. Subtract 12, I get 5x is 5, so I get x is 1. If I were to use this equation, let's see what happens. Negative 5x plus 2 times 4 equals 3. Negative 5x plus 8 is 3. Subtract 8, negative 5x equals negative 5. Divide by negative 5. I've run out of room, and you still get X is 1. Either way you do it, you get X is 1. Of course you do. Sorry about the voice. Uh, of course you do, because since they meet at a point, at a single point, 
It should not matter which equation because they both agree at that point. So it doesn't matter which equation you use. So the answer will be x is 1, y is 4. Okay, I like it. Let me get that whole thing in there for you. Cool, all right, so let's see. Is the next one, yes, the next one's a little tiny bit more. Well, actually, the next one is almost too interesting. You could pause there if you need to. Okay, get my awesome eraser in here. It's working so far. Eventually, it's gonna not work so well anymore, but oh well, I'll figure it out. Get in there. Do, 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 do. This is the exciting part. Maybe I should pause there. Oh well, I'm learning. Um, okay, so the third one looks like this. 2x plus 4y equals 5. That's my equation A. Equation B is 4x plus 8y equals negative 9. You'll notice that if you add things, you get 6x's and 12y's and negative 4. Only nothing, none of the variables cancel. But notice if you want to kill the x's, you would need a negative 4 here. So if I multiply this by negative 2, let me put it over here. So if I multiply that by, multiply a equation by negative 2, boy, that looks terrible. Anyway, so if I multiply this by negative 2, let me put it over here. Rawr. Times negative 2. So a now becomes negative 4x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8y. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So when you add these together, these cancel, and oh, shit. So here, I get 0 equals negative 19. Now, this means the same thing as always meant. Whenever you get something that's not true, there's no solution. So what that means is if you graph these two lines, what kind of lines would they be? If the solution is where they meet, these two lines can't meet. So if you graph these two lines, they would be parallel. So that's why this answer is no solution. This algebraically, this is what the math looks like when it, because it can't speak. Thankfully, that would be weird if math could speak. It can't, so this is the best way it has to tell us, oh crap, those lines don't meet. Okay, so that was the third one. That was a little bit maybe too freaky too early, but hopefully that's basically the same thing we did before when we only had one variable. All right, you can pause it. Uh, okay. Yep, see, poor old eraser is already kind of like over it. Uh, let me see, can I clean it? No, just always bad now. All right, too bad. Oh, look at that wood, that's nice. All right, um, let's see, where am I at? Eight minutes, okay, good. Uh, let's see, fourth problem says equation is x plus 9y equals 1, and the other equation is 2x minus 6y equals 10. Now, I, I want to point this out. I'm not going to use this, just in case you don't notice this most of the time, but do you see how I could divide this equation by 2? And then these would almost be where they need to be. But let's pretend like we didn't see that. Just in case you pick up on that, you can totally multiply both sides by something or divide both sides by something. And I would probably only want to divide if it wouldn't make fractions. But let's just pretend we didn't see that. Uh, I don't want to try to kill y because I'd have to multiply both equations by something to make these match. So let's kill x, which means I need a negative 2 here so it would cancel with this 2. So I need to multiply a by negative 2. So let's see, x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18y. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, so again, I made sure that one of the variables between the equations has opposite coefficients. So now when I add these together, the x is canceled. Negative 6 and negative 18 is negative 24y. 10 minus 2 is 8. Oh, this is going to be neat. Ooh. Oh, you're going to be excited about this. So when you divide by negative 24, 
Yeah, buddy. You get y equals 8 goes in, so you get negative 1 third. Yeah, exactly what you wanted. No. All right, so then if I plug in, the nice thing is before you give up the minute you see a fraction, notice how both of these coefficients of y are multiples of 3. So when you plug one third in, the fraction's gonna die immediately. So don't give up the minute you see a fraction, all right? In fact, don't give up at all, but you know, especially not just because, oh my God, it's a fraction. Um, so if I put it into the first one, x plus nine times y, but y is negative one third equals one. So x nine divided by three is three, and there's a negative, so minus, 3 equals 1, so then x is 4. Hey, that's not bad. It wasn't bad. So uh, the answer will be 4, negative 1 third. All right. Not too bad. Okay. So again, pause. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where'd my eraser go? Look, there you are. All right. Let's see how you're doing there, buddy. Okay. Still doing relatively fine. Okay, I'm going to have to buy some cleaner or something. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Again, that could have been somewhere I paused, but I know you guys are just so excited watching somebody erase a, dry, uh, uh, erase a whiteboard. All right, let's try one more of these, and then there's a one about Cokes in a burger. Mm. All right, let's see. Number five says... 3x minus 4y equals negative 22. That's the first equation. And then 2x plus 5y equals 16. Now I have a choice to make. I like the fact that, no, first off notice, nothing cancels when I add things together. So don't do that. Um, I don't know. I might show you guys. I, I, I've said that before. We'll see if I remember. I think it's just if, if I remember. There's something kind of cool you could do here. But let's just attack this directly. I could either try to kill the X's or I could try to kill the Y's. The Y's have larger numbers, but notice how they're already opposite signs. So they already have one of the things going for it. And I'm less likely to make a negative mistake. But I do have the trade-off that I have to work with larger numbers. So let's see. Just like LCD, how do you make 4 and 5 the same? You make them both 20. So if I multiply the first one by 5 to make it 20, it will be 15x minus 20y equals negative 22 times 5 is negative 110. You know, I have, I have all kinds of colors here, but all right. Maybe I'll try to incorporate this as I get more used to this. Uh, B... So now I want to make this 20. So I'm going to multiply this by 4 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 4 is 20. All right. See, now I can see I'm doing the right thing because something's going to die. 16 times 4 is 64. So when I add these together, I get 23x. These kill each other like I wanted them to. And this is probably going to be 46, and it is negative 46 because the bigger one's negative. And the reason I said that is because 23 goes into 46. X is negative 2. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I need to figure out what Y is. This is why I should have bought a bigger one, but this is all that was where I went. Uh, and Amazon's not delivering shit anymore, so too bad for Jeff. So if I put a negative 2 in for X, let me do this in a different color now that I was saying that earlier. Make it easy on you for once, right? Maybe. Let's see if this shows up right. All right, let me get over here. So now I know x is negative 2. So I can rewrite b as 2 times negative 2 plus 5y equals 16. Oh, crap. Negative 4 plus 5y equals 16. Add 4. I am saying everything I am doing. I don't know why. Okay, there. I stopped. Yay! So then, the answer then, and again, it didn't matter which one I picked. I just picked that one because there's no negatives in it. Just, you know, because I, I have a choice I can make. So then the answer would be negative 2 comma 4. And just to check it, let me use the other equation I didn't use. 3 times negative 2, negative 6. 
minus 16, 4 times 4. Negative 6 minus 16 is negative 22. Yay. Oh, man. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. So last one. It's going to be the word problem. So let me see. Let me get all this in there. You can pause it if you want to. Yeah. Let me get that over here so you can really see that better maybe. Okay. All right. Maybe I should pause. No, you guys just love this. It's not as good as power washer videos, but... Uh, maybe it's still sort of satisfying. Or not. You can always just fast forward. All right, come on. My God, there's a lot of crap on that one. All right. All right. Okay, sorry. So, now we've got... Number six has got Cokes and Burgers. It says, how much does each cost? Right, I go right to the question I can identify the two players the cost of coke and a burger not surprisingly I'm going to call this one M I'm joking C and B and then the equations this is really nice this is a very classic system of equations word problem two cokes and one burger is 450 Three Cokes and four burgers is $13. So this is my equation one, my equation two. And you should be able to identify which variable would be the easiest to kill. Okay, so it's got to be B because there's a one here. One's kick ass because they become whatever they you want them to be. Two and three, I have to multiply both equations by something to make them both six. And one of them's got to be negative. All right, so I'm going to multiply the first one by negative 4 so that what ends up here kills this. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8C. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4B like I wanted. 450. 450 times 2 is 9. Times 2 again is 18. Negative. Or you can just use your calculator. I know you guys got calculators. whoop de doo so now I can now I can kill this thing. This 3c minus 8c is negative 5c. The burgers die. That's kind of sad. And then 13 minus 18 is negative 5. Whoever made this problem is being really nice to themselves. So what's this mean? Cokes cost a dollar. Get up there. There we go. That's what that means. And then let me use this first equation because it's already got b almost by itself. So that's 2 times Coke price, which is a dollar. Sorry if you're getting seasick. Plus a burger equals 450 minus 2. A burger costs 250. Did I erase anything? No. Coast co Coke. Okay, 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 okay. Cokes cost a buck. Burgers cost 2 bucks and 50 cents. Good Lord, Jeff. I'm going a little crazy with this quarantine, but hopefully you guys are doing relatively okay. Hopefully you guys are watching these and keeping up with homework. Um, anyway, I'm probably going to send an email out with some ideas about how things will continue after spring break. This week, I really just want us to try to get through chapter five as much as we can. Um, and then we'll worry about what the course is going to look like when we really get into new stuff and then tests and stuff. I'm still working on that. Okay, that's enough for that. That made this a little too long. All right, I'll talk to you next time. <laughs> talk to you later. Bye. This is weird.